Veganism is making quite the news these days. I've seen the movement pick up so much momentum since I went vegan four years ago, and I'm shocked that us activists have been able to spread the message so quickly. But at the same time, the speed of the movement comes at the price of all these misunderstandings, misinterpretations, and ridicule. These days, a lot of people jump right into veganism but then quickly jump back out to their old eating habits. And usually the case is that they have not caught up to speed with what proper veganism is supposed to look like. And it's understandable, veganism can be challenging because it's not just a diet, it's a lifestyle change. It's difficult eating out with their friends and family because like I said, there's just so much misunderstandings, misinterpretation, and ridicule that's going to disdain your moral compass. And it may affect your relationships, especially if you're around righteous people that don't want to educate themselves and get up to speed with what veganism is all about. It's also stressful trying to find the discipline and strength to let go of meat and dairy products that you've been eating your entire life. And of course, there's a monetary cost and the time it takes to prepare the food. So in this video, I'm going to show you six quick tips on how to overcome these problems so that it doesn't feel so overwhelming, which you've probably already guessed by reading the title of this video. Tip number one, when it comes to eating out, know your values. Now this one's a little tricky because many have difficulty keeping up with their friends and family when it comes to eating out at events. And if you're vegan solely for health, then just consider eating before you go out and then just go hang out with everyone after at the event if they ask you why you're not eating just say oh I got a health issue now and you know if it's a serious health issue they're not gonna question it if they're your real friends they aren't gonna force you to ingest something that's gonna kill you unless it's alcohol of course but if you're going vegan for the animals a lot of the times the question that arises is whether you respect the belief of meat eaters or whether they respect your beliefs and eat somewhere more suitable to you. In my opinion, it really depends on you because it's not what you say, it's how you say it, how you present and communicate your values that will determine whether your values are taken seriously or shunned. But remember, even if they are ridiculed and disdained, it's okay to have enemies because having enemies means you actually stand for something. So don't overthink it when it comes to being around negative people. Tip number two, healthy food is not expensive, trash food is just trash cheap. This is like Einstein's theory of relativity. Healthy food could just be normally priced and it's McDonald's that actually sells this trashy junk food which makes it cheaper than normal, natural, organic food. Especially here in America, we normalize junk food and in doing so, we normalize that price range. Think about it like this. Someone made, I don't know, macaroni and cheese out of plastic and sold it for 10 cents because it was cheap to produce and also happened to get the taste just right somehow. Now, are you really going to say, oh, I have to buy the one for 10 cents because the healthy mac and cheese is way too expensive for me. That's out of my budget. How am I going to ever afford that? The exact same way you afforded to buy that iPhone, iPad, a brand new iMac, cars and clothes. Listen, the food that enters your mouth not only influences your physical and mental health, but it impacts the probability of your lifespan. So the quality of food Food is the last thing you want to cheap out on. Cheap out on something else. And if it's so bad that you're living out on the streets, then consider raw vegan. Raw whole foods are usually the least expensive foods at the grocery stores. Tip number four, slow and steady wins the race. Start picking days of the week where you will have green days, where instead of eating meat and dairy, you go out and try a new vegan dish. First, slowly go into veganism and be sure to reward yourself every time you make progress so that there's some classical conditioning to strengthen your willpower so you don't revert back and forth like I used to. And then just go at your own speed. There are not that many guides out there on how to properly ease into it without reverting back and forth. So personally, I'd recommend reading this short book called Transitional Veganism because it talks about a lot of different perspectives of veganism that aren't really talked about. So it's an interesting read that can help. 
For example, and this is reason number five, never should you go into vegan meat substitutes thinking that it's supposed to taste exactly like real meat because vegan meat is not exactly real meat. It's vegan meat. Try to think of meat and dairy as its own category, which has its own interesting taste. You know, don't immediately cast vegan cheese as horrible just because you had the expectation it was supposed to taste exactly like cow cheese. Just keep trying different brands until you find the one that's perfect and suits you. There are so many options out there. I mean, this is 2019. They make vegan alternatives every month at this point. Keep in mind that there are brands of meat and dairy that taste horrible and some that taste amazing. Similarly, there are vegan imitation meat and cheese brands that taste horrible and some that taste amazing. In fact, I know meat eaters who have told me that they've tried vegan meat that they think actually tastes more flavorful and clean than real meat. Vegan food is great, you know. Sometimes I feel like you're missing out more as a meat eater just because there are over 80,000 edible plants out there for you to explore and people are still hung up on the same three dead animals. As a vegan, you are more likely to explore and experiment with foods that you probably would never have had before. You get to have a new lifestyle and it's pretty fun when you get the hang of it. And it takes a couple months to habituate, which I mean, really depends on if you're doing vegan the right way. But once you do adapt, I remember I used to eat two scrambled eggs with cayenne pepper and those uh, string cheeses every morning. And now if I even go as far as to smell someone cook eggs, I just feel like vomiting, you know? I think it's 10 times harder to go back to eating all that nasty junk because you're just not gonna wanna eat meat and dairy anymore. Think about it like this, you can always go back to eating meat and dairy once you've given a vegan lifestyle a chance, but the people I know that went vegan and then reverted back to eating meat didn't do veganism the right way. If you do it the healthy and proper way, you'll just feel so much better, so much more awake and alert. It just, I mean, I don't know how else to describe it, you just feel good. Oh look, it's Dr. Gene reminding us to eat our avocados and like this video. Anyways, lastly, tip number six. Deal with the vegan stigma through understanding why they criticize. If you've seen my video titled, You Only Hate What You See Inside Yourself, you might recall that you only hate what you see inside yourself. Wow. People will project their shadow qualities onto you. Not all of them hate you, but those that do, their hate tells you a lot about what they store in their shadow self. For example, if a hateful meat eater were to tell you you're a wussy for being a uh, compassionate, lovey-dovey, hippie vegan, then what that tells us is that they have unconsciously locked their compassionate, lovey-dovey, hippie side away in their unconscious shadow. And when they lock this up, they obviously are not allowing themselves to express this side of them, which results in this unhealthy projection, which is basically the psychological term for hatred. Now, don't be ignorant of their projection on you, but just take it into account why they hate you and then just take their feedback neutrally. It's okay, people hate what they don't understand. That's why if you notice the people who understand the vegan agenda generally don't hate on vegans. I mean, you're gonna have to deal with a lot of haters trying to trigger you, but the point is if you show them that you're triggered, you give them exactly what they want and they'll just do it even more to you. So when you are dealt with these situations, and if you haven't, you probably will at some point, you must be neutral in your response. Knowledge is power, as they say. With that being said, hopefully these six tips can alleviate the challenges that you will face in your transition to veganism. But like I said, once you get here, you won't want to go back. I think it's worth the struggle of trying to habituate and adapt to a much better life and lifestyle, you know? Uh, so that's all I got for today. Let me know if you found this video helpful in the comments section down below and if you have any other challenges that you need help overcoming. And be sure to check out my other videos like my vegan rap if you haven't already, which is probably the most overly produced video I've made and ever will make. Until next time, chaos out. out.